Hey, welcome back to Milton Daily Homes. Chuck here, and we got a list about half the sizes yesterday, 15 plus three. And we'll start off with uh, 561 Childs. Uh, it's a 259, there's no private garage, there's just surface parking. Whenever you have surface, you have to be really careful because a lot of times you're only getting one spot and there are a lot of families now that are two car families. Uh, there is something back here. It's probably not the mall, although it's not that far from the mall. So it's probably something on Nipissing. And they do have the ability to build up to four stories there with an existing building. It's probably not gonna happen in the near future, but you do wanna know that if you're looking at uh, purchasing this home. Now the kitchen looks like it's had some work done. The pot drawers, you don't see that often in these homes. It's not crazy finishes, but I would say for the price, I mean, it's certainly looking like a good option. Uh, the surface parking may only give you one spot though so if you have two cars that's definitely something you want to look into before buying and uh, so we've got maple here it's 283 it's a two bedroom it's one of the smallest two bedrooms it's less than 800 square feet i don't know if i love the photos here but i, I there's a lot of competition right now in this range and i think that um I, there's there's some that I like a little bit better at this price. Jervis we actually profiled yesterday, but I'll go through again because um, for some reason the pictures I find didn't have the same resolution yesterday. But it's a good looking home. Lots of upgrades. 1370 square feet. They've got the upgraded uh, shower ensuite, ensuite with the uh, the offset subway tile, and uh, very good use of. Uh, wallpaper as well. Most of the backyard's a deck, so if you're looking for grass, this may not be the perfect backyard for you, but it's still a, a great looking home, and it looks like it's Energy Star rated too, so your bills are typically 30% less than most of the other homes. Uh, Grand Bell is 409, and it's nice to see that they cleaned up before taking photos. Uh, that, of course, is sarcastic. But you know, some sometimes with these homes is there's just there's situations and there's things that come up where they're not getting it perfect. It's like let's just roll with the best we can. Sometimes tenants in there, but here's the thing: it's a smaller four bedroom place. Uh, Sixty seven by one twenty is a very good size lot, so it does have a lot of things that uh, that I do like about it. You come in, you clean it up, you put a new kitchen in, and a lot of times you'll find yourself up a lot closer to the mid fours. Uh, very, very quickly. Okay, so lots of space in the driveway to park cars side by side as well. Uh, dairy is 419. So highest sale ever in this area is 385. So these guys are going, I know what we'll do. We'll list for 35,000 higher than that. Good luck with it. It is one of the, one of the, uh, the larger uh, units and it does back onto the green space, but I think they're gonna have a real tough time over 419 when they really don't have a, a true backyard. Farmstead is 425 and it's in a development called Milton Brook Gardens. Uh, there's a small uh, condo fee attached to these. I think it's about 70 or $80 a month. Freehold town, but as we've talked about many times, parcel of tied land, the road is a common element. So for garbage and snow removal, they actually have to charge you a little bit for it. Uh, it does look like it backs onto green space. And if that's the case, these are usually about 15, 1600 square feet. Um, you've got to walk out to a deck overlooking the green space and usually the uh, the ones that have the walkout basement do have that so it could be a very positive thing um, McNabb is 4349 and so it may kind of angle off and be pretty close to this home because it looks like a corner property and inside it's slightly better than the uh, the other one we saw in Dorset Park for 409, but it still needs some work. So uh, all things being equal, the one thing that probably has me the most concerned is the electric baseboard heat and no air conditioning. So you don't have duct work in this house. And for that reason, I definitely jump over to the 409 one. It's a better palette to work on uh, for a future renovation. Haxton is 1510 square feet and it's a Hills View end. And we just, we see these, there's nothing here. That, now it's nice, but it's nothing that I haven't seen probably five or six times in the last month. And to, to put the fence in here is probably somewhere in the neighborhood, I would guess on, on a slightly larger end. It, you, you share with your neighbors too. It's typically the way it works. Um, I would guess somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 to do the fence here. Uh, it's okay to me. You know, Vanier is 469 
probably an over-improved kitchen for this kind of area. And so it's pushing the, uh, the price range up. They could get it though. I mean, it looks like they've spent a lot of money in here. A bit more of a basic shower, but they've done a, uh, a nice countertop, you know, hot tub in the back. They do have some features. There's no shots of the basement here. So there's a couple things missing, but I, uh, I do like it. Here's something here. Reverse osmosis filtration system, you get practically zero for that, and they can cost a lot of money. So it's usually a good idea to take that out of the inclusions unless you really don't want it. And uh, the other thing that I've heard about RO systems is that it actually leaches. If you drink that water too much, this is a home inspector that told me, very qualified guy, and he said that it'll actually leach some of the, uh, the minerals out of your bones. So especially for women uh, at risk of osteoporosis, you have to be real careful with those ROs. Uh, Duncan Lane is 470, and so it's, uh, it's probably right on the corner. Derry's probably not too far from here. You are close to the train tracks. Uh, it's a nice open concept layout. It doesn't feel like a semi. It feels a lot more like a detached home when you're inside of it. And it's a good amount of size. Uh, 470 seems like it's around the right range. Babcock is 490. It doesn't have the best curb appeal, about 1,900 square feet detached. Uh, Clark is 519. And then we've got some kind of four bedroom house. Uh, it could be anything. For, it's a Madame, it's 42 feet. So it's probably like a Wyndham corner. Because usually if it's on the inside part of the uh, the street, most of the stuff on this part of Clark are, are mad at me 36 foot uh, properties. So there you go. So that's all I have on this one here. But usually the windows are not four bedroom. They're only three. So either way, wait for the pictures on it. Uh, Yates is 529. It could be a model like this, which looks like a Powell on the corner. And uh, and that would certainly, they, the Powells do come in a four bedroom. Uh, granite counters, we're still waiting on the photos on this one here too. The finished basement. Again, we've seen a lot of these in the last little while. They seem to sell pretty well uh, around this price range. Cavanaugh is a little bit bigger, so we get up uh, past the 550 mark. And now what you have is a 2127 square foot home, but you don't have the finished basement. Value equivalent, I suppose, would be the uh, the green space. Uh, there were a few homes that were a little bit bigger than this with finished basements that have gone up in the 570 range. And uh, so the green space here would easily add uh, $10,000 for a basement in a home this size. You're probably at least 10, but you're somewhere in the same ballpark. So I think they priced it really well. I think it's very competitive. Same model is for sale here on Azelton. Slightly better front uh, elevation. They've got some good finishes and upgrades here, but they don't have that green space. So for five thousand dollars more, uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. You gotta, you gotta go to the previous one. Uh, Azelton to me is probably like you hear the train. It's a little closer. I would take Cavanaugh uh, location-wise uh, in terms of quiet and just overall appeal. I'd, I'd certainly take that one. Uh, you're close to a big community park there too. So that's the ones from the Toronto Real Estate Board list. Let's go back to the uh, the first one here. Reichert Court is a Brent Grove End, um, just a bit under 1,300 square feet. They've upgraded the uh, the flooring here. And uh, I'll see if I can show you the zoning map, but basically I don't even know how they filled this with 20 shots because there's not even that many rooms in this home. Uh, anyway. That is, I'm not even sure what that is. It might just be a ditch while they're building other stuff. Um, here's Reichert Court uh, right here. So it's actually this street right here. That's Dredge. So Reichert goes around. It might be this pond here. I'm not sure how close you are. Now here's the neat thing. I'll, I'll put the link down below. Um, but if we look at the zoning here, so there's the same street. C2 is commercial zoning. So right on Bronx, you're going to have the commercial on both sides. Residential medium density, so you're going to have more townhouses on this side here. Uh, there's a bit of a green belt, so that's obviously the pond is not going to be built on. There's the train right there, so you will hear it. I believe there's a sloping berm that helps with the noise. Um, but that's really cool. So you just go to the, the tab for zoning, and again, I'll send you that link to, uh, to check out the, uh, the GIS map for Milton. So 459, this one on Churchill. Um, Wheelchair accessible is a cool thing. And I remember seeing years ago is there was an agent that actually put the little blue wheelchair symbol on the pictures of the listing. And I thought it was absolutely brilliant because there's a real niche audience that looks for something like that because to retrofit a house with that stuff 
it gets it's very it's it's annoying and it's expensive so I do like that I like the competitive advantage here of having it 45 by 126 foot lot um, yeah let's see what happens with it I'm waiting for the pictures I do like Churchill's the street and then we've got this one on first line in Campbellville and 42 acres is basically land value you're not getting a real uh, at least from what I can tell not a real outstanding house uh, I haven't checked the virtual tour but you're getting the farmhouse outbuildings that kind of stuff really I think that all together it's not such a bad deal now it's not actually where it is here so this is Guelph line if we just zoom out a little bit here um, it's actually at first line so Nascaway of first line right here and then it's uh, it's somewhere around Conservation Road so it might be a little close to the train tracks but that's the location so you're not close to Mohawk um, yeah, right around this place is probably in my eyes a slightly better place to be so that is the uh, the list if you have any questions give us a call and if you want to come on a tour of homes you can go to meltontourofhomes.com or you can just click the link over there and let us know when you want to come and we run them seven days a week you get a real good sense of what you get for your money and the kinds of neighborhoods and uh, and homes that could match your budget so we'll see you tomorrow